How to not care about other people's failure and success, primarily their success. This is your first day in real estate, and I am your real estate sales trainer and coach, James Festini. And this is the program that's going to teach you how to sell more real estate in less time. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining me today on this beautiful walk after door knocking. Please make sure that you find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, wherever you consume your content. I'm also on iTunes, all that stuff. I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you guys are interested in systems to make you more streamlined and more effective at lead generation, that's what I do, lead generation and follow-up using the latest technology. Being a jack of all trades when it comes to the industry is important. So why would I talk about not caring about other people's failure or success? Because I do. There are other real estate sales trainer and coaches and other real estate agents in my industry that I look at their success and uh, I have to wonder, let's talk about like the coaches for example, I see them having tremendous success, more YouTube followers, more Facebook followers, more whatever, and I think to myself, how are they doing it? My content's real, I think it's good, people tell me it's good, but if you, know, if you listen to Gary Vaynerchuk, he'd be like, it feels really good, there will be more people following, you know, so maybe it sucks a little. I don't know, maybe because I'm making myself more available. I mean, I try to compare myself to others and that's the worst thing you can do in life is compare yourself to others instead of being yourself. And uh, it's funny because I use this phrase that I say, I continue to fly below the radar. And that's the story of my life. I've just always kind of been doing my own thing and uh, not caring what other people say. And then for some strange reason, I remain largely unpopular in school, in high school, elementary school, just everywhere. No matter what I do, just being myself is always odd, quirky, and unpopular. So I remain unpopular. I'm not the cool kid. Um, very strange. You know, I'll tell you the story. I was, uh, it was probably 2009, 2010. I was just finished training for a marathon. And uh, we were playing softball with a bunch of my friends. And... Uh, they were all lining up for the for the pitcher's mound and the the uh, first base and hitting and all that. And uh, for some reason, I kept I, I remained on the bench. And so I looked at the guy who kept picking all the players, and I was like, "Hey, why aren't you picking me?" And he goes, "Well, you know, we got other people." I'm like, "But," I, and I was looking at the other players, going, "But that dude's had like a, a, a heart a triple bypass." And he looks like he's going to go for a quadruple bypass. Come on. That guy's eating a burger on the mound. That guy's drunk. <laughs> How aren't you picking me? I go, I'm an athlete, right? I, I, I just completed a marathon. And he looked at me and goes, well, to be honest, this isn't a marathon. I'm like, all right. Seriously? He goes, well, look, I'll be honest with you, James. You're just not in my top 10. And I was like, oh, my God. I'm not in your top 10. And so I retold the story to uh, my brother-in-law who was also playing that day <laughs> and uh, just a couple other people who were friends of mine. And so it became like this running joke that I'm not in the top 10. And I even did a blog post about a, I don't know, six, eight, nine months ago about being in the top 10, that I'm not in the top 10 and I remain under the top 10. And this is the case for my content creation, my podcast, my YouTube channel, no matter how hard I try, I don't succeed like others. I have to try harder than anyone else, even when it comes to sharing content and being you know, a, a YouTuber or a podcaster. I have to try harder, I have to do more. I remember when I was in the army and uh, we would march, just marching, like you know, walking, marching, and I always felt like I had to walk harder like I would sit there and uh, I would be, I'd be marching and I felt like my legs were running as hard, uh, like I was practically uh, speed jogging, speed walking and uh, everyone else was just walking. And I remember looking at, uh, you know, one of my battle buddies next to me and I said, hey man, are you, are, is this hard? Like, are you trying, are you walking fast? Does it feel like you're going really, really fast? He goes, no. And for me, it was like I had to constantly, I was pushing my legs to just move faster. It felt like a struggle, even though I wasn't hurting and I was, you know, in great shape. 
it just seemed like for me, it was much, much harder to walk that fast. And the same goes, it seems like, I don't know, you've heard that story about the duck, where you watch the duck and the duck's gliding over the water and the feet are moving really fast. And that's probably the case for most people succeeding in any business where, you know, they make it look easy, but they're paddling under, not me. I'm, I'm literally like the duck whose hair's all frazzled and feathers are falling out. And like the feet are just flailing under. And every once in a while he has to flap his wings just to catch up to the other ducks. What the fuck is wrong with me? Uh, it's the struggle, right? I always say maybe God's playing some funny trick on me where he's like, James, you just not sure how long we're going to make you struggle, but you're going to have to do this well into your golden years. You're going to have to try harder than everybody for the rest of your life. Are you okay with that? I was like, yeah, I guess so, God. I guess so. I'm sure there's a I'm sure there's a big banquet at the end of this thing, and, and you guys are all gonna have a good laugh at like how much work Bestini had to put in versus everybody else. Ha ha ha. What am I getting at? In business and in real estate, in uh, the coaching and training space or in the uh, you know, in the YouTube space, in the coaching and training space. Welcome to the Festini Factor, a weekly program that every day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you're gonna get a piece of content, actionable items, something that at $50 a month will be an absolute no-brainer. Every weekday, you're gonna receive one video. Monday, we're gonna have motivational messages. Monday Mindset is what it's called. One of the questions everyone asks, how do I keep going? I'm gonna let you in on that. The Monday Motivational. Tuesday is gonna be technology. Every Tuesday, I'm gonna deliver you a message about the latest and greatest technology, whether it's old school or new school. Every week, you're gonna get a Technology Tuesday tip. Wednesday, Wednesday is marketing. Whether you do it online or you're going old school, if you're going door to door and you're creating marketing pieces, you're creating flyers, every Wednesday I'm gonna deliver to you actionable plans, actionable items where you can download a template for marketing, whether it's an email marketing piece or an actual printed piece that you can take with you to the doors or a mailer that you can do. You can start adding and building your letter library. Wednesday is gonna be marketing pieces, the world of marketing. Marketing. That's a big day for us. Thursday. Thursday is going to be sellers, exclusively dedicated to handling sellers, either obtaining listings, negotiating contracts, scripts, dialogues, expires for sell by owners, you name it. If it's a seller, I'm going to cover it. And of course, Friday, the last day of the week, setting you up for the weekend, buyers. Every Friday, I'm going to give you tips and pieces of advice on how to generate buyer leads, how to handle buyer leads, and that includes negotiating, how to get your offer accepted, how to write the perfect offer a whole system that I share with you so that you can go out there and get to work thanks for watching no matter how hard I have to try to keep up no matter how hard I try to compare I'm just gonna be me I have to be me and I have to stop caring in business and real estate you know we'll look at other agents production and we'll see you know like the, the, the top agents in the office top agents in the company top agents in your area you think to yourself how are they getting business i've met them uh, they uh, uh right it's like i, <laughs> I want to talk smack but like you know one of them looks like they never brushed their hair the other one looks like she never brushed her teeth uh, it just why why do i have to suffer so much why why is it that no matter how much I suffer, I can't get ahead? And um, the, I think it's because I'm comparing myself to other people that I suffer because I'm looking at them and maybe we don't know what their suffering is and maybe we don't know what they're up against and maybe we don't know their truth. And so to look at other agents in your industry and say they're doing so great, maybe they're not, right? Maybe they're not, maybe they're all just pretending. I, I, I honestly think that a, the majority of the real estate agents in this business are just pretending to succeed and they're all actually in a tremendous like downswing and they just keep up appearances. This is a very strange industry where we always have to pretend like things are great no matter how bad they are. So 
why uh, should we judge other people? Can we judge other people? It's not healthy to judge other people. It's not healthy to even judge yourself. If you're doing the best you can and you're doing the best you can with what you've got, be grateful with what you've got. Be appreciative of what you've got. Don't look on the other side of the fence. The grass is not greener. Once you go up to the grass and you touch it, it might be freshly painted. And you might find out that it's artificial grass. And, and yet, we're always looking at someone else's success, whether it's in business, whether it's family, whether it's health. You never quite know, you know. You'll see someone lose all sorts of weight and you'll be like, wow, they lost all this weight. Must be nice. And then you find out they had, you know, they had a, <laughs> an illness that wiped out their intestinal tract and you're like oh, must be nice that they're so blah 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 you know we, we just judging greed isn't that one of the is it greed or envy envy is a sin so I'm, I'm here to tell you guys how can you avoid being envious know that it's a sin isn't it a sin it's seven original sins or whatever envy is a sin and being envious of someone else is a bad thing. You can't be envious. Gratitude is the only thing you can have for yourself. You have to be grateful for what you have, even if it's nothing. Even if you're having a terrible year, terrible month, terrible decade, right? No matter how many bad hands you get, the fact that you are still sitting at the table says that you are winning. Don't ever let anybody put you down and don't ever let somebody else's artificial or real success weigh you down. I've got to stop. So I've had to unsubscribe from a lot of YouTube channels because I was doing this thing. And I've told you before on my channel that if I make you cringe, if I make you cynical, if for some reason while you're watching my content, you, you, you become like nasty and cynical and you're just like, oh, must be nice, blah, 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 asshole, this and that. If that's what it does to you, unsubscribe. It's very unhealthy in this day and age to be able to, to see people transparent, that you think that it's transparent, but when the reality is, is it's maybe not transparent, but maybe it's more smoke and mirrors, and you'll never know. I try to judge people based on their perceived success when the truth is I should be focused and worried about my own success. So from this point forward, I say never again will I be disagreeable to a living soul that I will commit to being myself and allowing my content to shine through and allow myself to be myself, whether it's in business or in family. I'm blessed. I'm uber blessed. I am the most blessed person in the, in the world. And whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. And whether you like it or not, doesn't matter. I want you to like me, but I can't make it up. And uh, if other people have to make up things just for them to, to have you like them, then is that reality and is that something that you can appreciate and admire? When the truth is, is that we like each other as humans because there's some attraction that we have. And we say, these are my kind of people. And so I'm speaking to the people who like me and I need to watch and listen to the people who I like that don't make me cynical. So again, how can you control this envy? Unsubscribe, block, shut out. Social media is a in curse when it comes to the ability to stumble on a piece of content that you could go down this rabbit hole of poison. It is a mental poison. It is harmful to you and it is harmful to your family. And if it slows you down, weighs you down, brings you down, it's not a positive thing. And I hope that, that what I'm doing here and providing you this content does nothing but uplift you and make you guys feel absolutely positive in life, that you can appreciate it. The fact that you can hear me and that you can see me, that's gratitude, man. That you can have this and hold this and say, you know, James, preach on brother, leave the comments below. Or should I care that you leave the comments below? Why? Why? <laughs> you can say thank you, but I'm going to thank you, all right, just by watching. Thank you. That is my gratitude to you. And I should not be worried about the, the, share, the shares, the likes, and the acceptance. I don't care if I'm in your top 10. My kids are in my top 10, and I'm definitely in their top two. And that's all that matters. Just a little ounce of gratitude goes a long way. 
So for some reason you're finding yourself in this position where you're envious or that you dislike the competition. Oh, so many times. I mean, oh my gosh. I drive by real estate signs and I flip the bird all the time. And every time I'm running past them, I'm like, I should just kick it down. And if I ride my bike, I'm just like, I should just spit on it, right? It's just like these, these little mental voodoo darts, these little pins that I'm poking in these voodoo dolls when it, it really was a reflection of me and my inability and my insecurity and uh, discovering yourself even if you never discover yourself part of that process is accepting yourself for who you are and being grateful for what you've got even if it's nothing it's more than most so uh, again thank you very much for watching I, I thought I'd talk about this because you know I just I felt it <laughs> thanks for watching thank you thank you for watching I'm grateful this episode is brought to you by MojoSells.com. Expires for sell by owners and prospecting solutions along with DNC compliance. It is my CRM of choice because I can set up emails and letters and follow-up campaigns to follow up more efficiently with the leads that I generate. Go to MojoSells.com. Consume content on YouTube. Go to James Festini. If you want to listen to my content on iTunes, please leave me a five-star review. Join the Festini Mafia at JamesFestini.com forward slash training. There you'll find all of my products and information. If you like to make money, get back to work.